So naturally, after all that repairing, my room ends up messy. So it's time to clean it. Okay, I've spent the last few weeks, um, you know, restoring this thing, cleaning this thing, and uh, everything is working fine, perfectly now. If you want to view those videos, then they're in the description or in the annotations, you know, around me or wherever I decide to put them at the time. <laughs> what I need to do now is find this do the place in my hi-fi system. So what I decided to do was completely um, take apart my hi-fi system over there, dismantle it, disconnect everything, take it all out of here, if I clear this entire freaking area, <laughs> and then, you know, start all over again, stacking one by one and then reconnecting everything. You shift over there. <laughs> okay, you don't want to shift over there. <laughs> okay, this is way lighter than freaking real. <laughs> things first disconnect everything from the mains I'm pretty sure wires start to dangle themselves on purpose it's like you put two wires there like that over time they just start going Ooh. my earphones I've been looking for these for so long and they're under here how can you fade in color you've been hidden and protected all this time you've been hidden from the sunlight okay straighten my back so I don't slip a disc okay that's that this is my rant, and of course, if you want to see my headache of <laughs> repairing this, um, and the link is in the description below. I'm going to try to move this around by leaving this connected, because I hate connecting these. The wires are very thick and not easy to kind of put inside, if you know what I mean. No, oh, what the freak. Let's just take it out. <laughs> it's, things will be a lot harder if I do the other way. <laughs> okay, so the marants, this is nice and light. And last but not least, we have the JVC cassette deck, which, to be honest, I got a feeling this needs a little restoration. Start here, and we have my record crit is there. Okay. The speakers now these are Wharfdale Diamond 9.1. These are not obviously not vintage; they're modern, but. I really like them actually. I took a gamble buying these because um, I didn't know what they sounded like. I just got them from, ordered them from the internet based on reviews and I'll be honest, I really like them. They do exactly what I need them to do. They got enough oomph, enough power. These actually have a good bass and a good sound all around. But this is not a speaker review so I won't jib jab too much about this. <laughs> I'll put uh, this uh, inside. Get them out of the way. Lamp out of the way for now. Basically, I got myself some small wooden planks which I will put here like this. Some more wooden planks on there, and I just put the tape deck on top. Right, so as you can see, I've put this on the granite slab. It is way more stable and sturdy than it was on the carpet. Just to remind you that this is not a how-to video, it's just me doing what I'm doing with what I have. Okay, now I'm going to connect my hi-fi system up. So first to first, first to first, first thing is going to be real to real. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do... This is the record for the real to real, so signal goes into here. And this is the output from the reel to reel so signal comes out of here. So this goes to the play, this goes to the record. Now my Marantz, as much as I like it, has it has got inputs for you know two decks, but it's only got the record out for one deck. So you can only record on one deck. Uh, so what I've decided to do is I went around the house and I found these splitters, these RCA splitters, and uh, do this what I can do, <laughs> but no other option. Uh, what I'll do now is connect the record signal goes in here, so it connects to the out on here. That's left, that's right. Signal comes out of here, which is going to go in. So that's the reel to reel. Left, right. So now let's connect the JVC. Line in record. Let's connect the record first. I always used to get confused with these in-out record play things. So line in record, so it's going in here. To 
is done. So we have record going to both. It's sharing it. Well, if I do record at the same time, it'll just be quieter. So I have to put the record level up on each. But I, don't, I cannot see myself recording at the same time. Okay, so playback. Uh, the line out from here. So it's coming out of here. And I will put that, connect that in the input tape to auxiliary. What I also want is um, an input externally. So I can connect, you know, anything external to this. So that's for this. It's left, right. So this is the phono, the uh, the turntable, which last but not least, connect this, and this. That's fine. And we have the ground wire here, which there you go. I connect that on before it starts buzzing its face off. Okay, so let's connect to system one. We've only got one set of speakers. It's just too thick for this. Okay, that's fine. We went in. I had to get I had to get the pliers and just twist these. And it's all connected now. That didn't take as long as I thought it was gonna take, to be honest to you. Okay, so we have everything connected, everything is fine. Just need to Tidy these cables up a bit. Oh, and I forgot to connect the power. Okay, so let's separate the power cables from everything else. Single nut in it like this. As you can see, that this veil hides that horrible looking side, that ugly looking side. And uh, you have a speaker here. Let's put the argila on here as well. There we go. By the way, this is, um, as I said, not an instructional video. This is what I'm doing with all that I have. Uh, I, I would actually recommend a, a good cabinet for this sort of thing. After all, vintage equipment like this deserves it. But uh, I'm trying to save space here and I don't have a cabinet. So I'm doing my best with what I have. So there you go. So sorted. Looks uh, way better than uh, it did before. I have a picture of it. So now is the fun part. We test it. So I managed to connect everything. This is a bit of a weird sensation. Have you ever had it? You can feel tingling on the surface of some, you know. And this is the first time I've actually felt it this intense. I can feel it on the marants on this. On absolutely everything metallic here. I don't... Anyway, enough of that. Let's kind of uh, start testing this thing. So let's switch everything on. Uh, I tested the turntable earlier on. Okay, do you know what the weird thing is? I'm not feeling that surface buzzing, tingling sensation nowhere near as much now that it's on. So 
sounding good to me. Okay, so let's test the cassette out. So let's take the, the tape monitoring off and switch this to auxiliary tape tool. Let's check the, the tape bias. Normal. Playback works good. You saw the vinyl, you saw the tape, and you saw the reel-to-reel. Um, -reel. Okay, so let's get a let's get a blank tape, and why not a metal one? Let's put the bias on metal. Let's do super anoris. Let's choose a record. Okay, so let's do a test. So let's start the recording. I would actually like to hear from those of you who have had, had experience with both DLVC and Super Eonores. What do you think? Which one, you know, do you notice a difference? What difference do you notice? I would like to know because I find them quite similar and sometimes I record something on DLVC using my small Sony Walkman and I play it back with Super Eonores and vice versa and it seems to, you know, sound okay. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Okay, so let's check on the tape now. How did the tape sound? To me this sounds freaking good. Really, this sounds good. It's like almost exact. Let's switch between the two. This is uh, playing on the tape. I've got the record playing at the same time, but it's switched on the tape. Let's switch it on the phone now. Wow! <laughs> oh my god, I pinned it exactly! <laughs> you are kidding me! So I'm gonna switch it to Pono again. <laughs> right, let's do the test which I am curious about. Since I've used the, um, the, the, font, the RCS splitters, let's see if I can record at the same time. And see what happens. Okay, so let's um, reel this in. Completely blank reel. I checked. There's nothing on it. I never really get a reel secondhand or something. I I don't like to record over it straight away. I want to see what's on it. See what treasures are on it. <laughs> you know, maybe there's like a nice song or it's kind of it's, it's kind of something special. Ooh, okay, hold on. Put it down a bit. Good, good. That record. And on Q. Do you know what bugs me about this? The fact that it has no pause button. It's just you have to straight away record and it's annoying. I really wish, would it really hurt to put a pause button on this? Seriously. I think I'm a bit late in my, you know, criticism now. <laughs> this is... Okay. Let's see what okay. I think it's recorded fine on both of them. recordings at the same time now. I mean, I don't know how I'd, why I'd want to, but <laughs> I'm sure there'll come a time when I find it useful. I'm gonna finish off with a little bit of an unboxing. Um, where's the case for this one? And that is like a new old stock unboxing. <laughs> new unboxing, yeah, unboxing if you want to call it. And that is my my brand new egg for real that's like untouched. <laughs> because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record my archive my records under this. Okay, so here it is, the Agfa 7-inch reel, which has been 
unused, unopened even, new old stock. Well, it has been, except for the cellophane, I should say. You know, I kind of took the cellophane off and I thought, Ooh, why don't I just make an unboxing? <laughs> it's a bit late, but anyway, I haven't gone inside this yet, so... And how do I do that? Oh, okay. <laughs> I can't open. Okay, let's see what this looks like. I'm curious. Ooh, nice thing. Ooh, that's nice actually. It's got a nice blue tint to it. Now oh, that's like a it's track list card, isn't it? Kind of just like you know, but what's on there? And this is still kind of stuck here. So let's have a look. I don't want to take this off. <laughs> it's just new, but I need to record my vinyl on it, so I'm gonna have to take it off. Like, which side do I pull? I'm not sure which side to pull. Oh, okay. Well, whatever side to pull, I pull it. Uh, let me just get this off. It's a bit yee. Oh, it's. Do you know when tape becomes old and it has that sticky residue? It's got that. Let me just kind of. Oh, I'm happy with this. I kind of would actually start recording my uh, vinyl singles and albums on this thing. My favorites. It's like a nice kind of archive. Because this thing, you know, I'm very impressed with how, how the quality of the recording on this thing. It's just like. The exact sound. You know, there's no, there's hardly any loss of quality. If it's a good reel, that is. I'm gonna thank you all so much for your likes, for your shares, and uh, for your thoughts that you leave in your comments. Thank you so much for that. Also, subscribe for more, and for now, I will say adios. <laughs>